Hey guys, George here. So um, I'm recording this on the 17th of December, 2023. And I got the idea that, hey, the anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge is coming up. So guess what? I looked through my, I rummaged through my scenarios, um, MMP and the third party scenarios that I bought. And I bought something off of George Cullum. Um, so I actually found a scenario that took place on the 17th of December, 1944. So it's um, Wacom Rhein. I don't know, I mispronounced that. Uh, German is not my fort. Uh, a promising start. Uh, so it takes place on Longsdorf, Tandel Road, Luxembourg on the 17th of December, 1944. So it's the beginning of the um, of the uh, Battle of the Bulge and uh, elements of uh, first elements of 915 Volks Grenadier supported by 352 Panzer Jagger Ab Abdelung uh, attack from the north. And uh, the victory conditions is to have at least 4 VP, no, uh, 12 or more VP exit the south edge of the road. This is the north. Okay. And at least 4 VP must be infantry. And prisoners don't count. Historical outcome. There was a, a big uh, firefight. Um, the Americans did some quick firing with 40 millimeter buffers, 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 which caused heavy casualties amongst the grenadiers, forcing them to abandon the attack. So the Americans won the engagement uh, in this instance. Now, to ensure that I play both sides on uh, to the best of my ability, I made a a, a an Excel spreadsheet, and I'm warning myself some points. Um, so the side that wins against historical results gets 30 points. The side that wins as per historical results uh, gets 20. And the side that loses as per historical gets 10. And the side that loses against the historical res results starts with 5. Those are the basis points. And then you get... Um, you get uh, more points for CVP, casualty victory points. And then if your casualty victory points, you achieved your whatever, it, uh, you achieved your uh, a win or a loss, and you have one-to-one -one casualty points, you get an extra 15. If you have two-to-one casualty points, um, you get 10. And three-to-one or more, you only get five. And that is because um, you are... Uh, being rewarded if you played both sides to the best of your ability and you're being awarded the least if one side gave in and eliminated itself uh, quicker. And this will determine actually um, the ultimate result. Okay, so uh, here we go. Let's begin and let's just go over uh, the map so the uh, Germans be, uh, start off board. Um, only, uh, only hexes south of Hex Road J are playable. There's a couple of overlays here. And basically, um, these are more or less known minefields. I didn't want to complicate the game. I wanted to, um, to, uh, start off right away and, um, you know, not to sp spend so much time on setting up. Now, in, a uh, Face-to-face -face match, of course, all these guns, the Bofors and the 57Ls, would be a uh, hip. Uh, but not necessarily in place. Uh, you would have to roll uh, entrenchments to emplace them by SSR. And I don't think I'm going to bother rolling with emplacements and uh, bother entrenching. And this is uh, at start. I'll let the well, this fellow cannot entrench. He's in a building, and he's in a building. He's in a uh, brush, so he can certainly try and entrench um, or get in place. Let's see if he would be in place. I doubt I can rule anything less than a five. See? There. He's not in place. So I'm thinking let's not roll for emplacement for anybody, but let's, let's figure it out there. Here, one more time. Uh, two fives. <laughs> and there, see, I can't rule anything less than a five. <laughs> and I'm not going to bother entrenching the troops here. 
All right, so rally phase, I should go down the checklist. So I, I always have the uh, essential sequence of play by the late Joe McLeod on uh, PDF when I'm playing. Um, let's start off with wind change, nothing, and we're going to start a little log file. Yeah, so we start a log file on my account, and um, what we're going to do is play both sides to the best of our abilities. So the German player uh, moves first. We're going to move a little counter there. Player, uh, German player turn one. It's a little scenario. Uh, we're going to do one hour of gameplay and see what happens. All right, so this fellow's here. They're going to go CX. We're going to go right into uh, movement. So there wasn't any much of a rally prep movement phase. And they're, they're going to go CX double time. Two, four, and six to there. Um, they're going to move double time as well. Um, and how much portage points do they have? Three. So if they have three portage points and they go double time with a leader, let's check our chart to make sure if it's worth it or not. Um, that chart being... A4, so three portage points, and we have a multi man counter with a leader, and they're both CX. They can go seven. You know, at that rate, it ain't worth it. So let's go down the path one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there. These fellows are going to go double time as well. So they're going to go one full hex side and bypass for one, two, three, four, five, and six because that's a path. Okay. They're going to go double time as well. Here we go. Uh, well, that's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, here comes um, here comes the difficult part. He, he's going to uh, voluntarily lose concealment. Starts uh, he's off board. He doesn't start. He's already started. He's going to go one, two, and three. And is he going to open fire just now? No, because let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, and um, he was only in line of sight. Well, he's going to stop there and delay. So it'll be a plus two. Plus one because he's small. And uh, we saw a couple of hexes away. There are more than six hexes away. So let's check that out. It would be nine. Uh, it would be a six to hit. Um, actually, five to hit. Uh, because because of the hedge. Uh, so we're going to hold our fire. Okay. These fellows here are not going to go double time, are they? Uh, they have to. All right, let's go double time. One, two, three, four, five. Stay there. All right, these fellows are going to go double time as well. One. Don't forget, this is a free loss check, so let's take a look and see. Can they see each other? Yep, with four hindrances. So he lost his concealment. And let's undo that. Okay, I see what I did. I, I, I moved the counter, but I did not, the uh, CX man counter, but I did not uh, move the actual unit. So we're going to lose concealment. He's going to hold his fire. Um, 
he is a 547. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They're out of uh, range, so. Okay. So it's 2, 3, 4, 5 to there. He will assault move to there. They're going to hold their fire. I got an AT gun and I got a Bofors there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. This fellow is going to go uh, double time as well. The squad is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six to there. Now this fellow is going to voluntarily lose concealment. Start for, not start for one. One onto the board, two, three, four, five, six, and seven to there. Um, concealment is my friend, so I'm not going to defensive fire. Advancing fire, this fellow will fire there for the sake of acquisition, and that's where my eight minus one leader is there. So it's going to be a lot of uh, modifiers, but let's roll it and figure it out. Well. If I'm firing area target type, which I have to, it's plus two for concealment and at least uh, plus four, um, plus five because he's a non turreted vehicle. So he's just going to get a big act there. Acquisition, we're going to label it, uh, change it for size, label it A. And then we're going to um, link it with a alt control L okay and then put it on the target which is there he'll fire there so here it goes uh, to hit I rolled a 10 and he's going to go an act and it will be also a large act meaning area fire that will be act B that's in Bravo Link them. Okay, and let's go to route phase. Remove all the moves. There's no preps or defensive fires. Let's advance. Okay. I'm not ready to advance and engage in a firefight yet, so I'm just going to go like this. And like so. And like so. Here we're going to advance into the woods. They're going to advance this way. They're going to advance this way and that way. That was German turn one more or less. Close combat, concealment gains, none. All right, let's go on to rally phase for the Americans. Okay, now I think I will lose concealment and open up, but uh, before I do, just want to check what kind of ammo I have in here. Show info. So it's 1945 or 44? I think it's 1944. Yeah, 1944. The reason that's special is because it'll tell you what type of ammo you have. So I have HE from January 1944 in ETO. 45, it's 7 or less. D4 as of January in ETO. Quick setup for the weapon. So I'm going to fire regular AP ammunition. I'm going to try and hit him. Oh, geez. He has an armor factor of 14. What does a 57L two kill number look like? 15. Is it a double L or L? Just a uh, no. Interesting. 
Uh, they did say they have the karma. Oh, what's a guy to do other than to try and get a cr critical hit? So he's one, two, three, four, five, six X's away. He's a small target and he's hauled down because uh, he's behind a wall. So I need a 10 um, plus one because he's a small target. That makes it a nine. And I need a turret hit. Good luck, George. Ten, I lost concealment. And I fired. And now, what I'm going to do is, I got a knack. Oops. And we're going to intensifier. Let's undo that for a second. Okay, and go like that. That's better. Okay. That's weird. Oh, he has an act there. Oh, I see. Okay, and we have an act here. That's the importance of uh, lettering everything. All right, we're going to intensifier. So our intensifier shot will be one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, base ten, um, plus two for intensifier. Uh, plus one because he's a small target. Minus one for our act. So it looks like an A to hit, and I need a turret hit. Ten. I think I just mouthed my weapon. Oh well. That didn't bode so well. He prep fired. Let's see how we're going to fare from here to there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hexes away. Uh, he is not hauled down, but I get uh, at eight hexes away, it's a nine to hit. I get plus one for the 10, the hedge, and plus one because it's a small target, so it's a six to hit. And I don't need a haul hit this time or a turret hit. All right, we said uh, nine, uh, two, uh, seven to hit? Yeah, yep. Sound to hit, let's see. 10. All right, let's try a um, intensifier shot. And he has a, a 10 and he lost concealment as well. Let's try an intensifier shot and we'll figure out the math later. To hit. Two guns are mouthed. And when you mouth, uh, you no longer have a, a um, act. I don't like deleting the out. Oh, God. Really bad. Really bad. And we uh, prepared here as well. Well, uh, we should have removed the moves. Let's see. I don't got any more shots. And I certainly don't want to move. So let's go to prep fire. Let's go to movement and then defensive fire. Now these guys are going to fire back. Let's see what kind of weapon they have. They have a 75 I'll show info. HE7. Well, he's going to try an HE shot against this target. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so that is, uh, oh, mist was in effect as well. Three point three two. Let's take a look at that. I completely it has no effect, but um, 
in the ultimate uh, result, but E.3.32, I believe it's an LV hindrance. Let's take a quick look. Fog well, admits uh, there is a there is a DR to determine whether a fog or mist is an effect on a one uh, or a five. And the result is mist three point three two and three point three two. Whenever a mist is present, hindrance applies to ranges over seven hexes of fire. So we're good. We're good. We don't have to take into a, um, into effect that. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There is a a, a mist in effect. So let's just double check it. Three point three two. Echo three point three two. Turn out a heat when that happens. Plus one. For each multiple of six fractions rounded, whatever. All right, so let's see. Uh, he is a small target, though. Well, the crew is. Uh, we're going to con convert it to infantry target type. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, at eight hexes away, it's seven. Uh, plus one for the uh, hedge and plus one for the mist makes it a five to hit. Hit. Okay, that's a 12 even shot, because 75L is 12 on the IFT. All right, IFT. Access sign, he's eliminated. Let's put him in the casualty bin. And he finally fired. Well, it's one of those games. Now he'll fire at his acquired target again, but this time this guy has retained concealment, so it'll be area target type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, within 6 hexes. So it's 7 plus 2 for concealment, makes it a, and minus 1 for the act, makes it a 6 to hit. Okay, it was area target type, and none of them are in place, but he does have a plus 110. So the 12 goes to a 6 up 1 on my dice and six up one is five six on the six is a one check loses concealment well a one check yeah loses concealment because we've got something over a pin delete that delete that he needs to roll six or less makes it what a trooper his act goes to a negative two and a small one, size, and his act went to a negative two. All size and flip. Okay, and he final fired. And now this fellow is going to do what he's supposed to do and open fire. Okay, and let's see what uh, we got here. We got two hindrances. Range of 10, and uh, the range of the MG is 12, so you will have um, two hindrances, mist, midst, and that's a plus three, and minus one for his leadership, it's, uh, four plus up two, leader directed, and nothing, not even rate. And the reason why I said leader directed is because. There's no cowering involved. So we'll go for another 15 minutes and do a one player turn. And then what I'm going to do is play the scenario on my own and show you the uh, outcome. Okay, defensive fire, nothing there. Advancing fire. Advancing fire, there isn't any. Route phase. I think everybody got eliminated. Let's uh, zoom out. There's no brokies. 
whoever got shot at died. All right, let's remove all prep and death fire. And advance phase, uh, no advance. Concealment gains, nothing. Well, it's only 26 minutes. We could do another player turn. Um, only one thing's wrong with that. I'm a bit tired. <laughs> so what we're going to do is save save uh, the turn. Talk about the scenario a little bit. I'll continue on my downtime and give you the AAR for Saturday. And I'll publish this video right off the bat. All right, hold on a sec. Yeah, I did a save. And um, uh, just to zoom out here and see what the heck is going on. Um, I think at this juncture, um, the Americans maybe should have pulled back. Um, two, I have no idea how I broke two out of out of my three or how many uh, 18 guns are there? Three. Two out of three 18 guns have, are broken. Um, the Germans already made a sizable advance. Oh boy. I think it will be very difficult to win as the Americans. And um, my overall score, according to my sheet here, might not be too good because it looks like I didn't play the Americans well enough. <laughs> we'll see how things unfold. Uh, will unfold. Um, my plan here is, again, another pincer movement, moving along uh, lines where I can be afforded some cover, especially from these guys. These guys didn't get a chance to fire back. Um, Next turn, if they survive the um, attack, the German fire, they'll fire back. And uh, over here, they might repair. You never know. Um, yeah. So we'll see what happens. So this was the end of turn one. I'm going to play it on my own and um, see how things transpire. I'll give you a after-action report on... Um, Saturday morning. Take care.